Hi, Tom Cole for the Steve Taylor Community Star, and um, you know we're privileged to do a lot of these, and which are which are wonderful, uh, an honor to do them. It's always special when the person you bring in to honor somebody who has been a lifelong remarkable friend and one such gentleman today, who's our Community Star, is Mr. Bob Everly. Bob, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Tom. Always, uh, you know, I've always admired uh, what you do in the community, how you treat people, how you help people. Our Community Star is a body of work. You know, somebody that, man or woman in our community that's been 15, 20 years, 30 years, you know, doing it every day in the trenches, lifting uh, our citizens and helping kids. And, and uh, you're, you know, with Team Sports, which you started in 1980, everybody knows Team Sports, uh, you and John Brennan. But you two, through all these years, starting in 1980, you know, have provided helmets and shoulder pads and jerseys and shoes and, for all the high schools uh, in the area. And I know a lot of times that uh, people didn't have money to pay for things. <laughs> and uh, you know, Bob Everly says, oh, well, okay, we'll help you out. We'll figure it out down the road. And you and I know how many times you've helped somebody in those situations where they, for whatever reason, no fault of theirs, they just didn't have it. And you were able to still get the kids outfitted. The, the kids can play, they can participate. You know, you've always been there for coaches and kids since 1980 when you started team sports when you reflect back on this give me some thoughts about team sports and you know what you've been able to accomplish i know there's some changes which we'll get to in just a little bit but when you look back it's an american success story i'm sure when you started out you didn't envision this great <laughs> success right because most small businesses fail and you, you and i both know that you, you're an American success story, and uh, so give me some reflection on that. Well, Tom, you go back in our history, and unfortunately, John Brennan uh, has passed away right. this, this spring. But John and I were two guys that uh, uh, just thought we could start something a little bit different. We wanted to uh, build relationships, make friends, and athletics was our business. We understood it a little bit. We had worked for the old uh, athletic supply company. Uh, they had some difficulties and definitely got out of the business. So John and I tried to pick up the what right. we would call the team or school business. And we went around town and, and talked to various people. And uh, if you remember Herm Kander from Absolutely. the city recreation department, what a great guy. And said, Herm, we need your help. What, what do you need? You know, uh, people like that, Ben Williams, Denny Bullbach, and everyone stepped up and said, gosh, we'd like you to succeed. And I think that was the biggest thing that happened. People in this town respected us because we were local, we cared, yep. we worked together. You're right. Yeah, we needed to get paid. We needed to pay the bank back the loan <laughs> yeah, right. and that sort of thing. That's and, always important. And we, you know, John had four kids, three of them in college, and yeah. he's looking at me like, are you crazy? Yeah. And uh, my kids were both born after team sports started. Yeah. It was a partnership, and I, I said this, that John was with me for 14 years. At his wake, I said, we've been in business 42 years. We had a lot more fun the first 14 than we did the last 28. Right. I don't know if everyone understands how difficult it is to start a business from scratch, right? With an idea, right? It's yeah. an idea. Yeah. And then how do you get people to buy in? How do you get people to trust you? How do you get people to give you their business, right? None of those things are easy. And uh, you know, you and John did it so successfully, but I think part of it is to your personal reputation. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, people always uh, liked you, respected you, and uh, knew that you would treat them right. And I think you made a business out of treating folks right. You're not gonna please everybody a thousand percent of the time, but if you do that, good things happen to you. Do the right thing, do the best you can, show people you care. Lou Holtz, yeah. I've lived with that forever. And I think if you remember that and you live that, and we certainly lived it, we were two naive guys and thought, oh, this will be simple. <laughs> All of a sudden, it became a bigger business. We started to grow. Yeah. I think our growth was particularly um, uh, affected by so many people that, that word of mouth advertising. Yes. Those guys will take care of you. They've got the lines. They know what they're doing. Don't worry about it. If they say it's going to be there, it's going to be there. If it's not, they're going to call you. And yeah. you're, you're going to you're gonna know it's not going to be, oh, my God, my uniforms aren't yeah. here. So we just built it the right way from a, a grassroots. Uh, uh, we started to grow. We employed a lot of people that you and I both both would call yeah. friends yes. and kept going. Bob Nichols and his family have been rooted in our first couple employees were his daughters. Yeah. And uh, it, it's all work. Uh, there was an article one time, thank, your, thank their lucky stars. And I think that's maybe we 
got up on the right side of the, of the bed one day, but it's it sure worked, and, and we have a lot of people like you and Steve Taylor and, and the people that have supported us over 42 years. Yeah, well, I, it's funny, because I've interviewed Coach Holtz three or four times, and as you said, a remarkable gentleman, and he also came out with uh, something I've always remembered, and that is that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And if, if people know that you actually care about their well-being, they'll go a long way with you. You know, <laughs> you know hey, well, okay, Bob, you can't get us the jerseys Wednesday, but what, next week we can get it done? And you say yes, and you know, there's something about instinctively caring about people, and it's a mutual success, which you've created success not only for team sports and all your employees, which how many people have you employed for how many oh, years gosh. in this gosh. community, making a good wage, raising families, positive in the community. I mean, what does that mean? You know, you, you get an aggregate of businesses like yours supporting families in our community. Positive change in a community occurs locally. Small pockets locally of people doing good things that start to ripple out into a larger area. He said that's where change occurs. And you've, you've lived that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, Tom. I, I would tell you for the first 10 years, particularly, and even today, how many events we've gone to, how right. many spaghetti dinners, yeah. how many, right. you know, could you come over and, and just say hi when, when we had a semi-pro football team here in town and they yeah. were a fledgling outfit and we were worried about getting paid <laughs> and they ordered helmets and shoulder pads and yeah. they, they weren't in yet. And I can't remember the coach's name. He said, could you come down and talk at my dinner so my players know that we really do have <laughs> We're gonna have and uniforms and helmets and all that. Yeah. One of the funniest stories, and I'm trying to think of the young man's <laughs> name, but he played at the University of Michigan, came yeah. out of Akron and was a halfback, a okay. uh, tailback. Okay. And he came up to me afterwards and said, Bob, don't be in a big hurry to get those helmets and shoulder pads because that's one more day, Ricky Powers, <laughs> that Ricky said, one more day, Ricky won't get hit. <laughs> so great stories like that. R Ricky's a smart guy. Yeah. I, I could go along with that, you know. We don't have the pads on today. Oh, gee, really? Okay. Shorts and t-shirts today, guys. That's a, that's a good thing. You know, we've covered a lot of the longevity of team sports, but there's exciting news. There's been changes at team sports, and, and why don't you let the folks in on that, Bob? Yeah, positive changes. We uh, are part of a larger group. We found four of our friends in Texas, and we joined together into a uh, consortium. Um, we now call it Game One. We're in about 40 states. So we become a national organization. We're still locally um, yeah. run, locally involved, but we're supported with some national buying power, national banking, that sort of thing, which is really helpful. It's allowed us to do some things we couldn't do. Of course, John's out of it. Both my sons are involved. We're excited to, probably most people don't know, but we're opening a 135,000 square foot distribution center out by the airport. Which so is fantastic. We will store merchandise, warehouse merchandise, ship merchandise, all of our decoration, which we have a world-class decoration department here at Team Sports, but now that'll get transferred to the new building. So the key to our business, you have to. Selling merchandise, particularly uniforms and t-shirts and shorts, things, the decoration is key. So that'll all be done locally and then shipped across the whole Eastern uh, seaboard. So you're talking about local construction, local building, more jobs, yep. you know, giving people more employment opportunities in our community. You know, those are all the things that, that make a difference, but I, I think there's a Bob Everly way of doing things. I don't know if you tell your employees this, I don't know if you write it down or whatever, but there's a certain way that you do things, you do business, and it's always first class, and uh, it's treating people well, and I think that's just a winning combination, Bob, and I think that it, that speaks to why you're here as a Steve Taylor community <laughs> star for all of these years, and Mr. Brennan certainly has done that along with you. Through thick and thin, you've always, because I know there were probably not some of the easiest times, right? right, right. But you, you, you always, you learn more about people in adversity than you do when things are going great. You are always the same guy, whether things were going great or maybe things were a little tougher. You never changed, and you, you treated people well, you treated them with class, positive business, positive in the community. How can I help you? What can we do? I mean, those are all 
Bob Everly-isms. Well, Tom, I, I tell you, that I tell my sons, uh, both of them, I tell salesmen and yeah. anybody that is works with us, not for me, together, that uh, you get up in the morning, you take a shower, and you take on the world. The world's going to take you on. Yeah. But you, you have to be positive. Right. right. And my dad taught me you don't look up at people, you don't look down at oh, people. Oh, I like that. You look them all in the eye. I've told every say, every person that's ever worked for me, I'm not Mr. Everly, I'm Bob. Yeah. Please come see me if I can help you. My door's open. If I'm on the phone, you know, let me know you want to see me. We'll 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 yeah. make time. We'll talk. I'll help personally. You know, whatever it takes, uh, business-wise, whatever. It's just. Pay dividends, just being a real person. Yeah, well, you've done that. You've made a career out of that, Bob. On the way out, going to be some budding entrepreneur, some young lady, some young man that they have an idea, right? A lot of people sit and write things on napkins and restaurants and all those things, but they don't move it into an action plan. So if you look into that camera, Bob, and there's a young entrepreneur out there that has an idea, what one piece of Bob Everly advice would you give them to get their project from writing it on a napkin in a restaurant to really make it happen? Well, I think you, you have to have the, the courage and test of fortitude. If you believe what it is, what it what you can do, then go for it. You have to look at the, obviously the financial situation. Yeah. Uh, you have to look at, is there really a niche? Is this really right. uh, a necessary product or idea, but I've talked to a lot of different people, I had a lot of interns, a lot of people, uh, young people um, pretty much are, are look at the positive. The negative is not ingrained in them, it's taught to them. Right. So I try to encourage them and say, go for it, go for it. Make sure you have a good business plan. You know, you need to have some, who's your advisor? Who's, who's yeah. gonna work with? And that's kind of what I tell them. I think Mr. Brennan, John and I were, were fortunate, but there's hard work covers up a lot of shit. I, I was going to say, you know, I've, I've interviewed, been privileged to interview so many great coaches and athletes and which you all know, you know, we've yep. been at the same banquets and been at the same games and, you know, the person has been sitting in the stands, Bob, eating hot dogs and drinking Pepsis, you know, and they say, well, that person's a natural or they're a natural at it or yeah, they got really lucky there. And Bob, you've given us so many uh, great insights in uh, starting a business and being successful. But one thing we haven't touched on, which I know you want to touch on, I see it from a coaching end. I coached for 30 years in high school and college. And if, and if you don't have the support of your wife in that endeavor, you have no shot. I don't care how great a coach you are. I don't care if you don't, you don't have that support, you're done. And I know it carries over the same thing in business and your wife's support that she's given you. Well, Tom, beyond a doubt, I think coaching and, and running a business are, have a lot of parallels. My wife, Carol, when we first had this cockamamie idea, she <laughs> said, basically what I said, go for it. Yeah. We've got, you know, let's try and see what's what. But you need that 100% support because yeah. it's early mornings, it's late nights, yeah. it's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I can't get the kids. I, I got yeah. a, a promise, you know, Coach Cole, I'd have his practice jerseys over there and they just got decorated. And Barb Brennan was much the same without the, so that That'd be the other piece of advice I'd give to any young entrepreneur. Check with your partner, your wife, your husband, your, your children. Make sure that you have a total agreement, a total commitment, yeah. because without it, it, it's difficult. It's yeah. difficult enough. And you and you mentioned also, just to emphasize, a uh, trusted advisor, because I just know from uh, coaching and, and uh, teaching and TV and all this stuff that I've been privileged to do, you need a, not a big group. You need a small group of people that you trust that will tell you the truth and you ask them, okay, say, I just did this show. Here it is, take a look. Was that okay? Did, did this look right? Did this sound right? And they say, well, no, I didn't like this or I didn't like that. Okay, fine, I'll fix that and move on to the next thing. You know, because people, you're not gonna always get the real story. You have to get a group of people that when they tell you something's not right, then you fix it. If they tell you it's good, then it's good. Because if you don't have a trusted group, because sometimes you'll get so much information that you, you can't please everybody, you know. They don't like your hair, they don't like your jacket, they don't like they don't like how you talk, they don't like the sound of your voice. I mean that's that's part of the deal. It's coaching, teaching, business, but but you have a small group of trusted advisors. Would you agree with that, Bob? Oh absolutely. Honest criticism, honest advice. Yeah. Yes men are a dime a dozen. Right. And they don't help you. No. They don't help you. You need to have that are you nuts, Tom, that you're gonna call that? Uh, I don't think it's gonna work and no one else thinks it's gonna work. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I think that you need and you need to understand where they're coming from and the better that relationship is whether it's your wife you know an advisor yeah. what whatever it is you need to have someone that that says I think you're going the wrong direction Bob 
On behalf of Steve Taylor and our gang, uh, we want to congratulate you, you know, Mr. Brennan, uh, posthumously, on running a, a, and your sons, your wonderful sons, and your wife, running a wonderful business, employing folks locally, helping the local economy. And uh, I, I think someday you ought to write a book, you know, The Eberly Way, because, I, and I, I mean that very seriously, I, I, I think it's something can be taught to people. How do you interact with people? You, you know, you can either be positive or you can choose to be negative. I've never seen people that are negative all the time be successful. It just doesn't, it's easy to be negative, but you know, it's harder to be positive, to find a positive, to say, we'll get there, we'll get it. But the Everly way has always been to, to be positive, and that's why you're our Steve Taylor community star today, Bob. You can have the first copy, Tom. All right, I like that. <laughs> I need it signed, though. I'll need Absolutely. It signed. Thanks, Bob, for being with us today. Tom Cole for the Steve Taylor Community Star.